Hey there, my name is Marquis, and in this video, I'm going to show you how I use Asana to create and schedule all my podcasts. Now, the podcast is something that is on the rise, definitely in popularity from a listener perspective, but also from people creating their own new podcasts. Brands, companies, solopreneurs, entrepreneurs, they're creating them at lightning speed, and some people are so hesitant to start, and that is only because they're not sure where to start. They're not sure how to keep it all organized, but I'm gonna show you my workflow today that will hopefully help you if you're using Asana or another project management system to get started on your podcast, keep everything super organized and stay on track. So with my workflow, everything really starts from the meeting booking link. And so what that looks like is we use HubSpot um, for our meeting bookings. And um, for me, I block out two days out of the week where I'm available to do podcasts between, um, I think it's 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. Just so I can keep the rest of my week um, free for other, you know, client meetings, internal stuff. Then I can just focus on the podcast for these two days out of the week. So they are an hour. I've set this up specifically for podcast recording. And then um, this link would be sent to a potential guest um, to book in their own time, answer some questions, and then get started. So I'm just going to start by selecting a random time, January 6th, 2021 at 12.15 p.m. Great. It's got my name. It's got my email address in there. And then we can just confirm that. And with HubSpot, I've redirected it to an Asana form. Surprise, surprise. Uh, with this form, it's great because you can um, just send this right to people. They fill out all the information for you. I'm gonna show you a template in a minute where when this information is filled out, I can just copy and paste directly from this form, put it into my template, and then um, follow the workflow until the, the podcast is fully produced. And so here they would just fill out um, their name. Great, I got some stuff here already. Company website. Um, do you have a microphone to record? And it just asks them these basic questions. Are you able to record audio to a separate device? No, doesn't really matter if you're not. Their LinkedIn profile, um, pretend, let's just put LinkedIn.com. There we go. And then their bio, bio goes here. And then I just invite them to upload um, a headshot of themselves. So in this case, I'll just throw in my headshot there. There we go. Um, there's some basic instructions just on the top. You, you know, I'll let them know this is a video recording. It's going to YouTube. Um, be ready to be on camera. And then I also provide just general questions that I'm going to be asking. So this is typically this is a view only document in Google. Um, where they can just get an understanding of the direction that the podcast will be going. But I always let them know, hey, this is just a guideline. Um, anything that we're going to be talking about. So I just like to have the conversation flow really naturally. So they have the option to take a look at those. Um, and then I'm going to submit this form. <clears throat> What I should point out as well is that in the back end, after HubSpot actually booked that meeting, they get a calendar invite to Google. It's already set in their calendar. Um, the reminder of the show is there, some etiquette things, how they can prepare, and then I have the copy of the questions in that email and calendar link as well. So great, everything's been submitted. Thanks for submitting. Um, your submission has been received. I'm looking forward to chatting. You know, check your calendar um, for the Zoom link. So everything's already in there. That's all been taken. Um, that's all been taken care of inside of HubSpot. So now I'm going to go over to my podcast production schedule. So you can see this is what the form looks like in the back end. You can add, you know, single line text here. You can add drop downs. I can add dates, attachments, anything I really want um, to this. And what's great about this feature is that everything just gets uploaded right into Asana. So any new submissions, they'll get uploaded right there. It's automatically assigned to me because that's how I set it up. And then I can see there's Marky Murray works at Ditto. There's his company website, LinkedIn. That's his profile. Here's his bio. And there's that headshot. And so I actually look at this in the board view typically so I can see new submissions there. Great. Um, you can see the different stages that I have here for the podcast. So the content backlog um, is any guests um, that I have that, you know, are interested or have reached out to that sits here. Um, I have my my interview kind of template and I'll just go through this quickly. So this is typically replaced with the interviewee name. 
Um, actually, I'll just duplicate it so we can we can see what's going on. So I'll just call this marquee test tester. There we go. So I'm going to duplicate that and it's going to show up right here. And I'm just going to put it into planning because now I'm planning to speak to this person. I have to get stuff together. They've submitted their information and I need to copy it from here over to the actual template. So I'm going to just fill this out. Interviewee name, company. Um, we know from that was ditto. Um, if we go in here, <clears throat> we can basically just take all this information. So we have the LinkedIn profile, we have the bio there, and then it's just really, really simple just to move all this stuff over here. If the bio was longer, I can just copy it like so, and then move it over here. So in this case, my bios typically look something like this. I have the intro here um, that I say every single time, and then the bio that they produce gets popped into there. I have the general questions and once I have the information submitted, I'll update their title, I'll update the company. <clears throat> and then the same in the outro, right? I say the same outro every single time with some slight variations, but it all goes right in there. Um, and so once that's all filled out, um, the recording time usually I, I fill this out or I check this off once the, the podcast is finished. So you can go, they're typically 30 to 45 minutes. Um, I have the link that would be to their their website potentially. Um, any project files, I link back to Google. So I have the Zoom audio recorded files. I have my external audio files. Um, any video files that come from Zoom, I typically you know store them in here. So I'll copy and paste the Google link um, here that goes to Google Drive. And then when it's fully produced, I have that YouTube link here as well. I've also created some subtasks so that when um, this is ready to go live, there's a spot. We just have to check these off basically. Did we produce the YouTube thumbnail? Yes or no? Who's doing it and by when? Right? The show notes, blog, transcription goes here. Who's doing it? When are they doing it? Also goes there. Um, audio files will sit in this as well, um, just so they're somewhere else. Um, we have any social content. So with my interviews and YouTube videos, I typically take the main show and then I'll break it down into seven to 10 um, pieces of uh, content that can be used across social media. Um, and actually have a production team that takes care of all of that for me in the back end. So all I have to do is upload the files, provide it to them, and then they take care of everything else. So that social content would be chunked up and um, put in here. And then any final audio for the podcast, um, we use Libsyn for the podcast, um, it would just go right inside of there. So it keeps everything nice and neat and orderly. And then as it goes through the stages, you know, obviously in production, when the date of the recording, let me just add that in, when the date of the recording happens, um, it moves to in production. And then once the date has passed, it goes into, you guessed it, post production. Um, right there, it goes in the queue like so. And then once the production team is finished with doing what they need to do, they've uploaded everything, they move it to needs review. I take a look at it and as you can see, there are some automations happening um, that move um, these to the different sections. There we go. Um, and so now it's in needs review. Once I reviewed it, then it goes to published and the production team will take care of the publishing, YouTube description, everything like that. So that is basically in, in, in a nutshell. I mean, there's so much that, you know, is going on behind the scenes here. Like I said, there's HubSpot that's happening in the background. There's a Google Drive where I have the copy of the questions, sorry, Google Docs. Um, any of the show files kind of live in Google Drive as well, and they're all linked within Asana. So your workflow may look different. You know, maybe you're using Monday or Airtable to do what I'm doing here. Um, Google Drive or Google Suite, sorry, seems to be the standard for housing um, a lot of this material and a lot of this data. But um, what, what really keeps me on track is having these automations, having this clear pipeline to see what's in post-production, everyone's on the same page, those conversations are happening um, kind of constantly. And then by the end of it, that podcast is produced. And all I have to do is just have those conversations, upload the files, and everything is done here. Um, so that's basically it. If you have any other questions, I'd love to um, answer them and leave a comment down below. If you found this helpful, please like, subscribe. And if you're producing a podcast, thinking about producing a podcast, or know someone who is doing it, and maybe they're doing it the wrong way, um, please share this video with them. Thanks for watching. We'll talk to you next time. Bye for now.